Baby Reindeer vs. You, the two biggest stalker shows in the entire world. So obviously the two shows would be very similar, right? <laughs> Wrong. Absolutely wrong. So today, let me expose some of the strange differences between the shows that you definitely didn't notice and how these differences actually made each show stand out. Firstly, our baby boy reindeer has a way darker color palette while you will tend to have a wide array of color. Now the shocking reason baby reindeer chose to go with darker lighting is actually very, very strategic. Dark lighting will always make any type of show or movie feel serious. Like it could literally be a 12 year old girl baking cupcakes, but if the dark lighting is there, then all of a sudden, she's probably a murderous psycho that's poisoning the cupcake. 100%. Baby Reindeer takes the same formula and puts dark lighting throughout every single episode. Now, us viewers are kept on our toes throughout the entire show. Every single moment, scene, weather, you don't feel safe in any of them. Because there's that dark little coloring in that show, that's what keeps your brain in alert. If we do a quick comparison in Joe Goldberg's show, if we look at daytime, it is actually bright and happy, which gives you sort of a safety net and makes you think, surely nothing can happen in this bright, beautiful setting. Nothing at all. And that lets you just sit back and watch the show and just breathe a little bit just breathe baby girl breathe <laughs> but in baby reindeer even the daytime has this dark timid lighting which makes you second guess yourself are you sure nothing big is about to happen right now are you sure even in the day things do look oddly serious here that is the trick they use to make you pay attention throughout the entire show but the show you still uses dark lighting but only in specific moments or areas this way whenever you do eventually come across a dim lit scene it hits you that much harder the contrast between joe living in a happy peaceful world to then boom going in that dark timid cage in his basement that little difference right there that's the sauce and it gives you a big shock to reality of what joe actually is his actual true intentions and feelings so both shows clearly knew how to use dark lighting but they just did it in two different ways Moving on. Did any of you guys personally feel like Baby Reindeer just felt like a play? It literally felt like I was like sitting on stage. Everything was just so played out, if that makes sense. Which is why the second difference we're going to talk about is show delivery. Baby Reindeer is shot in such a way where the characters deliver their lines in an upfront, direct way. This bar scene right here is a great example. The shots are so direct facing you. So when these gentlemen are speaking, it's such a confrontational manner. And then you also combine that with that up close camera work. And it's a recipe for an intense horror play delivery. I'll hang your curtains. <laughs> wanted her to laugh. While you, on the other hand, is clearly a way more natural piece of art. There's normal, well-lit shots, there's casual line delivery, even the camera angles are like shaky at times, they're delivering it in a way more casual, relaxed way. And this actually benefits you a lot because since you is such a natural, like, chill show, hey, let's sit back and watch this chill, fun show, whatever, and then something insane happens and you're like, what the heck? The first time I saw Peach die, it was such a shock because they weren't trying to make the show seem dark at that moment. It was him going on a nice little jog, a little jog, and then boom, the brick hits. Huh? Huh? But on the other hand, with Baby Ranger, take this moment in episode one times one. Then came her emails, around 80 a day continuing long into the night. Her address, a random series of numbers and letters like spam, but the writing, exactly like she spoke, unhesitating, unfiltered unapologetically raw. Since they make it feel like a play, the entire dialogue is so grand. It gives the show and the moment a higher level of attention. And most importantly, this all ties into actually making Martha seem like an even worse person. Which leads to the third biggest difference in the show that I'm, I'm being serious, I know none of you picked up on. No, there's no way. Maybe. There's no way though. I think. This third difference is Martha is intentionally painted to be a bad psycho person. Intentionally. In Joe Goldberg's show, the only thing painting Joe as the bad guy is his actions. That's it. The show didn't use any type of ploys to picture him or like portray him as something. But in Baby Reindeer, Martha is purposely made out to be the psycho extra person. Take a look at episode 1. The weird glare she gives, the super loud obnoxious laughs at the coffee table, her spazzing out completely randomly. This is all tied in to paint her negatively. Joe on the other hand doesn't have any social abnormalities he's not running around in the bar screaming at beck he's not doing these things he's painted out to be a nice charming relaxed guy that maybe just has like a little bit of an instagram stalking obsession like that's what they kind of show it as in the beginning but i know you baby girls are wondering kocho stop yapping like why is this difference actually important why does this matter well it's because in you they actually want people debating if joe goldberg is a bad person they want people like actually thinking about that that's why a lot of the times you'll see moments where joe rationalizes his thoughts 
thoughts and says things that show he cares for the girl. So he'll do something crazy like kill someone, but then the show will show us, wait guys, he's doing it for a good reason. He's look at him he's rationalizing it he's being a good guy they're doing that strategically because they want us viewers to sit there and be like okay i can't tell if joe's bad or good they want us to think about that but in baby reindeer the focus is a lot darker and martha's behavior is not up for any type of debate there's no like maybe she's misunderstood shut the hell up bro she ain't misunderstood <laughs> And it's clear they're taking the thriller route, the shock route. But now here's where the differences get juicy. Let's talk about the fourth difference. Let's talk about manipulation. Let's talk about the manipulation tactic between Martha and Joey. Martha uses a lot more of the real life manipulation tactics by manipulating Donnie with sympathy and innocence. You'll notice she always does something super insane like playing inappropriate tag with you. <laughs> tag, you're it. Tag, tag, tag. You know the scene. And then once you react negatively, she'll bring herself to such a vulnerable vulnerable state like freezing outside your bedroom window and then at that point seeing anyone sitting out there in this condition you have no choice but to let them in and just work it out with them that's the manipulation but in comparison the manipulation for joe is heroic that's his manipulation just being a hero as you watch the show from his point of view he's simply doing things to save the person. His actions can't be bad if they're saving someone, right? Beck's jealous friend deserved to die. She was jealous, toxic, and wanted to move to Paris. Good, smash that brick on her head. Think about the countless speeches you hear from Joe where he paints himself as the heroic one answer. Because everyone needs someone. What you really need is someone to save you. I can help, Beck. Let me help you. Or baby girls, how about this one? If I wasn't about to be late to see you, I would beat this guy bloody for the way he talks about you. But notice the, for the way he talks about you, it all ties back into protecting and saving the girl. And the very important reason this difference matters a lot is because now we can easily prove that Martha is the more evil person out of the two. I know there's a big, huge debate about this, but you can clearly, I 100% believe Martha is more evil because her intent, her actual intention is to obsess and like just torture the guy. And your intention should be to subscribe to my channel right now. Or you know, I can come over there. I have your IP address. Don't you worry, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we're on the topic of both stalker's intentions, let's further break down Martha's true intent so I can prove that she is truly a lot more evil than Joe Goldberg. As you baby girls know, intent is a huge thing when it comes to law because it shows you were aware of your actions. If me and you walk into a grocery store, la 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 la, and I leave with a chocolate bar because I simply forgot about paying, it does not make me as evil as someone else who also left with a chocolate bar but they intentionally knew they didn't pay. My actions and his actions were still the same. We both stole a chocolate bar but our intentions were different i didn't mean to now keeping this example in your mind martha is so much more sinister because of her intent she knows what she is doing and this episode right here proved exactly that it showed her many many past experiences with the law and going to jail which should mean by now she's very aware of what's right and wrong she's been to jail so many times she understands the law and yet she is still finding manipulative clever ways to hide under the law like the time when donnie told her to send him an email about what they want to do in bed something about curtains open your beef curtains i don't know i'm, I'm not gonna lie i'm just a, i'm a young innocent guy but basically, she sent that to the police. She, she didn't send it to him, she knows what she is doing. And the way you see her publicly speak with Toddy should make her intentions very, very clear. Joe, on the other hand, is no angel, but he doesn't have much prior experience with the police, and he also doesn't say anything that gives off bad intent. That is why he's such a more likable character. Everyone's always crying on TikTok, why are you guys fantasizing Joe? Oh, why not Martha? Double standard. It's literally because they paint him to be at least a chill, good person in the show. His psychotic side is simply him doing things with the intention of winning over the girl. His intent is pure. One of the stalkers protects his prey, the other one smashes a glass over his face. Now this next point is actually very very obvious and it's very interesting but a lot of people just don't pick up on it. Like no one actually thinks about the difference. Let's talk about the point of view of both shows. We watch you from the perspective of the stalker, Joe Goldberg. While in Baby Reindeer, we watch it from the victim's perspective. We watch it from his angle. Now the secret reason this difference matters is because when we watch it from the victim's perspective, we can see the actual harm caused by the stalking. Please keep that in your mind. Rewind if you have to. Keep that sentence in your mind. When watching a show from the victim's perspective, we can see the actual harm caused. When Martha sends Donnie the hundreds of emails daily when she waits outside of his home, 
we see the effect it has on him on his personal day-to-day -day life. Take for example us watching Donnie forcing himself to hide away at home because he was tired of the Martha torture. And this is one of those things that allowed Baby Reindeer to be a lot more darker and raw. We got to actually see the harsh brutal results of what having a stalker can do to you. But in you, the fun little show, the fun you, after Joe Goldberg does some stalking or just performs a casual kill, just a casual kill, we don't really see his actions impact anybody, not even the person he's stalking. He kind of just strolls on about his day and we kind of just move past it because we're watching from his point of view. In fact, a lot of the deaths in the show were so, so brushed off because of this reason. Like when Peach died, we literally saw the message of Beck confirming it to then fast forwarding one whole week in the very next frame. They just transition her death one week later, just like that. We didn't even get to see when Peach felt like she was being watched. We didn't get to see Peach's point of view. Was she looking over her shoulders? Was she anxious all the time? We may have seen it a couple times, but we didn't see the impact it had on her. But if you had taken the baby reindeer route, we would actually get to see that. We would maybe get an episode dedicated to watching her life. And let me know in the comments below, could this route have actually been better for the show? Just something to think about, baby girls. And now that I taught you guys a little about psychology, watch how Dune 2 psychologically made you love the movie. And make sure you subscribe. I love you guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah.